Hiya folks, in this video we're going to be showing you a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner all cooked in the Kasori Jewel Blaze air fryer. So let's do no more, let's start cooking our first meal which is going to be breakfast. Right, so we're going to be doing it in the Kasori Jewel Blaze which has got the element on the top and also the element at the bottom. We're going to be cooking an omelette and we're going to be using these ingredients. Right, so quite simple this folks, you can put in your omelette exactly what you like. We're having cheese, tomato and also spinach. So while Sharon's cutting up the uh, tomatoes, I'm just going to grab a handful of spinach. This is washed baby spinach by the way. And I'm just going to, not finely chop it, but just cut it up just small enough because it will actually go down to nothingness anyway. So. I'm just giving it a helping hand by chopping it into smaller pieces. Right, so now we're going to bring that all together in the bowl. We've got our eggs and we like to crack our eggs into a separate container first, just in case they're bad folks so we can see that they're okay. So we're using uh, three eggs for this omelette. There we go. We're going to put our 100 millilitres of milk in. Now we're using almond milk here only because I don't drink cow's milk so uh, you can use normal milk if you want and that just bulks the omelette out a little bit and all we'll do now is just literally incorporate our other ingredients in the omelette just to get it all coming together. There we go and we're also going to season that as well with some salt and pepper. Now we're using the white pepper here folks, put plenty in shower, like plenty of pepper. And add some salt to taste, this again is Himalayan pink salt folks. And that's it. We're going to put the cheese on afterwards, so we're going to now transfer this into our silicone bowl. I'm going to lightly grease it. Right, so we're just going to get some olive oil folks, just drop, put a drop in there and we'll just swish that around, it just gives it a helping hand when we get it out at the end. Right, there you go, we've oiled that and we're going to put this in the air fryer just to warm it up first. So let's just get the drawer out, just drop it in there. And we're going to put that on, what are we going to put it on, Sha? Do you know what, we'll have it on what is set on for a minute, 180 for 10, but we won't use the 10 Yeah, minutes. we're just going to put that in for a couple of minutes. And once that's warmed up, we'll tip our ingredients in, sprinkle the cheese on top, and then we're cooking on gas. No, we're not, we're, no, we're not on electric. I'm cooking in an air cooking fryer. In an air fryer. Right, so we'll pull the drawer out now. That's been on for a couple of minutes. The oil is nice and hot in there. So we're just gonna pour the contents of the bowl into our eight inch tin even. And now we're gonna get our grated cheese and we're gonna liberally cover. You want plenty of cheese, folks. If you do like cheese, this is the way to go. This is mature cheddar. Mature cheddar. Here we go. Pushing it down so it don't blow away. Yeah, Sharon says push it down just so it don't blow around. Right, so in we go. Right, so we're gonna cook this on air fryer at 180 degrees centigrade, and we're gonna do it for 10 minutes. Off we go. Right, okay folks, we just bleeped. Let's have a little look at this. Oh, look at that, Sharon. Look at that, baby. Lovely. I'll tell you what, shall we get it out, put it on a plate? Yeah, let's get it out. Right, here we go, folks, let's get it out. This silicone container, it's a lot easier to do them in this because if it was a solid container, you'd have trouble getting it out. But with these, all you've got to do is just pull the edge down and just get that spatula underneath there, look like that. And then you can tip it and tease it onto the plate at the same time, look at that. And that, my friends, is my breakfast omelette. Well, can you see how golden brown that cheese has gone on top, folks? Look at that, let me just spin it around there, look. And it's got a good bit of depth to it as well. Look at that, look. Right, go on in, Cher. In you go. Have a little taste of that, even though it's my breakfast. Sharing look is Look at caring. that cheese, look at that cheese, look. Oops. Go on in, it is hot, be careful. Is my breakfast nice? Very nice. I'm gonna have a go now. You have a go, baby. Right, here we go. I want a bit of that cheesy goodness, baby. I'm just gonna cut that out there. Oh yeah, it's like a mini pizza, Sharon. Look at that, look. Look at all that goodness, folks. Can you see the steam on that? This is gonna be hot. Healthy breakfast, people. Hold me up, I might fall over. I might push you over. Oh. Mm. 
that, my friends, is a taste sensation. Sharing is caring. Yeah, I will share it with you, Sharon. Yeah. Because that's the right thing to do, folks. Yeah. Right, we're going to eat this and we'll see you at lunchtime. Bye. You, you can have that little bit there. I don't think so. And I'll take the rest. Right, okay then, Sharon. What we'll do now then is we'll have a little lunchtime treat. What should we have then? We're going to have pasties with potatoes, cheese, and with a throwing in of little baked beans. Baked beans, cheese, it sounds fantastic, Sharon. We're going to be doing it again in a Kasori Jewel Blaze. And let's show you what we're going to be cooking with. Right, so this is as the pastry comes. It comes on a sheet, on a backing paper already. So uh, no rolling needed. And all we're going to do, we're going to make two lovely sized pasties here. And Sharon's just going to cut it down the middle with a pizza cutter. We find it's the best way to do this now. We have tried other ways in the past, but um, that's how we're scoring it down the middle. And that is actually now cut straight down the middle there, as you can see. So we're basically going to fill one half and then we're going to fold it over and it'll be like a flat rectangular pasty. Right, so we're just going to take our mash. Now this mash we cooked yesterday, it is cold and uh, we, have, we didn't add no milk or nothing, anything to it, Sharon, did we? No. It's literally just a pure mash. And what we're going to do is take our grated cheese and literally throw quite a lot of it in because we're going to actually mix that through the mash just to give it some extra flavour when we put it in the packing because we don't want plain mash in there, obviously. So just work it through. There we go. So we haven't overworked it so you can still see the shards of uh, cheese in there. And then we're just going to liberally put our mash onto one half of our base. And you can see there that the cheese is actually running through the mash. We haven't whipped it to a pulp. Right, so that's our base of it spread now. Now we're gonna get our beans. So, as you probably know, beans have got a lot of liquid that gathers at the top, so we're putting it in a little container there, and all we're gonna do now is literally just spread over the top, try not burst the edges of the pastry, and literally just put them over, all over the top, nice layer of them, and try and keep probably away from the edges if possible. So, you want a good bit on there. There you go. So for them two pasties there, we probably used about half a tin of beans there, Sharon. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. And with the remainder of our cheese, we're just gonna put that over the top, just sprinkle it over, get it nicely fully covered, folks. Get plenty on there. Because you want the cheese to ooze out when you cut into it. Right, let's pass them over to you, Sharon. And we're now gonna season them with some salt and pepper. We're using Himalayan rock salt here, and also some ground black pepper. Again, put a nice bit on, folks. We want to be tasting it. There we go, how about that? They look absolutely superb. Right, we've got the egg, and all we're gonna do is crack that into a bowl, and we're literally, we don't need to cook with the egg. All we need to do is whisk up that egg, and we're gonna use it as a glue, just to put around the edge of our pastry so we can stick it. And we'll also glaze our pasties as well afterwards with the egg, so you do need the egg, otherwise they'll look dry when you cook them. Literally, just paste it, put, put quite a bit on, folks. Make it really uh, seal, like nice and sticky. There you go, all round, and the top layer as well. go and then all you have to do is to fold them over bring that over and literally just get a nice seal match it up to the other side and make sure you push that edge down firmly folks and then afterwards you're just gonna crimp them with a edge of a fork just to hold everything together so there you go, there's your two pastries already done. Sharon's just putting a couple of holes in the centre just to let them breathe. And then over the top, just put plenty of this on folks because uh, you want it to have a really nice glaze. A lot of people don't put enough egg wash on. 
and that's what will give it its lovely golden colour. And there you go, that is our little pastries created folks, and I think you'll see that they're well filled, look at that, they're gonna, they're gonna be very good. Okay, so we're gonna be doing these in our dual blaze, because we've made them so big, uh, we're only gonna cook one at a time. You could actually make four and say cut oh. them down the middle, but we want a big one. And uh, here's our Kasori dual blaze. So we're gonna take the tray out, and we're gonna remove the crisper tray, because we're gonna be using that. And then we're gonna transfer our pastry onto our crisper tray just with a spatula. Get under it the best you can and literally just put it on the top there. There you go. How about that? Look at the size of that, folks. That's one really gigantic meal. In fact, one could probably do two people, Sharon, couldn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. So we're gonna drop that in there. There we go. Let's whack it in the drawer. Right, so we're gonna be putting that on at 180 degrees and we're gonna take that up to 17 minutes on the air fry setting and off we go. So there you go, the beauty of the dual blaze air fryer is that we've not only got the top element blowing down, we've also got the bottom element underneath heating from the base. So there shouldn't be any need to turn this over. We're not using any silicone basket or any paper internal liners because that can affect the cooking from underneath. So, right, we've got less than a minute to go now. And what we thought we'd bring to you as well is that this one here, we're probably not gonna cook it, Sharon, are no. we? So you can freeze these as well. So if you've just got a Tupperware container, you can put that in there. Or, or a even, plastic bag. Or slide it into a bag. bag and uh, you can put that in the freezer and have that out another time. They do look fantastic. We've not peeped yet. As I say, we've had this up for 17 minutes without looking. So when we open it up, you'll be seeing it for the first time with us. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look for the first time. Oh, look at that. Right, we wanna make sure it's done in the center, folks. So let's just get our temperature probe and uh, push that in there. We're looking probably for about 70 degrees. There we go. We're way up to temperature. Right, we're gonna get this out now. Shouldn't be too bad, as you can see. Okay, there it is, folks. Let's cut it open and have a closer look at it. Cut it down the middle. And that's it, let's have a little look. It's so flaky, that pastry, folks. I'll tell you what, we're just gonna dig into it. Let's get you a knife and fork. Do you wanna put anything on it? A bit no, of ketchup, maybe? No. Come on in. Oh, look at that ooze out, folks, look. Oh, yes. Oh, look. Come on, Shao. Oh, it's going to be red hot. That is going to be hot. You'd have to blow it. You blow it. I know it's going to be hot. That's hot, isn't it? More it is hot, isn't it? <laughs> Why are you all puffing and panting? I'll come around and I'll have a go. Right, it does look tasty, folks, but as Sharon said, it's very hot. That's why she can't talk at the moment. Now, I've got a bit of everything on there. Oh, it's made my eyes water, it's so hot. I'm gonna go in. Mr. Spestos mouth. Oh. See? Oh. Oh. Can't say they're not hot in the centre. Oh. Very, very tasty. They are a taste sensation, folks. They are very nice. Really, really tasty. You've got to give them a go. So really, you've got two pastas. There is two there, yeah. We, yeah, we definitely could have done these two or cut that in half. So, you know, if, if you're not a big eater, then obviously two's the way to go. Or if you want a big meal, have a big one. But these are absolutely fantastic. Look at that oozing out there. Yeah, let's show you. Let me show you. It's actually just stopped running. Yeah, just push it out, Shay. Go on, just, just press it down a little bit. Can you see that oozing out there? Oh, that's great. That is absolutely lovely, folks. That is cooked to perfection. So it's definitely a meal. So there you go, there's another little tasty morsel there, all cooked fully in the uh, Kasori Jewel Blaze air fryer. That is really tasty, really, really hot. And I think you'll enjoy it. A good oh, well. lunch, nice tasty lunch. I wonder lunch, what dinner huh? we'll bring. I haven't got a clue. We'll see you at dinner time. Right, third meal of the day, and we're not actually hungry, Sharon, are we? No. So we're cooking our meal for our daughter-in-law, Charlotte. And what are we doing for her? We're doing Toad in the Hole, which apparently is one of her favourites. She likes it, so we're going to do it for her. Anyway, this is what we're going to be cooking with. Right, so what we got here then, Sharon? Some potatoes and carrots that are going to be roasted. So you've cut the potatoes and the carrots 
in basically quarters there. Yeah. Now you can actually parboil it, boil them, yeah. can't you? Just yeah. get them started if you want, but we're not gonna bother with that. The carrots are actually raw as well, but we've cut them to a size where they're gonna cook pretty quickly in yeah. the air fryer. Right, so that's our veg. Yep. And what else have we got then? Got some sausages. Right, they're just pork sausages. Yep, and then we're going to make our batter mix ready. For the toad in the hole. Yep. So what do we need to get on first then? Let's get the sausages partly cooked. Right, so we're going to put them in the air fryer. And again, we're using the Kasori dual blaze and we're just going to put them in there. And we just want to get the cooking started. So we're going to put them on uh, air fry. And we're going on the, at 200 degrees centigrade. And we're gonna just take that down to six minutes just to get them started. We're gonna do three minutes per side, folks. And while we're doing that, Sharon's just gonna lightly oil. And season your veg yeah. how you want. Yeah, don't forget this is roasted veg, folks. So we're looking at roasted potatoes here and also roasted carrots as well. So put plenty of oil on because that's what gives it the crispy surface. And I'll put some salt and pepper on. And again, don't be tight with the seasoning either. And then just give them a little toss about just to get them coated. So they're ready. Very good. So now we're gonna make the batter for our Yorkshire pudding. And if you've seen any of our other videos, you know that Sharon does the batter a certain way. At the moment, because we're only making one portion, we got three identical glasses there, one egg broken into the glass, then we've got our flour, which is a plain flour. Plain flour, all levels and same. that height goes up to the same height as the egg. And our milk also is the same height. So basically, everything's the same there, the same height, got to be in the same glasses. And if we had two or three eggs in there, that would be up to there, you'd increase the flour to reach the levels of the eggs. It's always got to match the eggs. And also the milk. So everything is done by your quantity of eggs and your, your flour and milk go in the same. And we've got salt just for seasoning. So once you've got that, put them into your bowl. And we're just adding a bit of salt for seasoning. And all you do literally is whisk all, that, whisk all that up together. No lumps. And you won't get any lumps in that batter whatsoever. So Sharon's using the balloon whisk. So we'll let her do that and we'll come back to you in a second. And there you go folks, didn't take long at all. Now the reason why we've done that now is because while we've got five or six minutes there, we're gonna be putting the veg on obviously before as well to cook a little bit quicker. So we're gonna move the batter to the side now. That's just gonna sit and rest and while we're waiting, I'll do the washing up. See you in a minute. That time's nearly up now, so we're just gonna literally take these sausages out. Now again, as you can see, they've got a little bit of color on them, which is fine, that's all we wanted to see. And we're just gonna take them out now, let them rest, and then Sharon's gonna get our veg, which we pre-seasoned, and literally just tip it in there, and we can put that back in, and now get that going again at 200 degrees. And we're going to do that for 10 minutes as well. And we will be turning them over and giving them a little bit of a shake yeah, about, even shake. though it is the dual blaze and you don't need to. It's just something we've always done yeah. and we like doing it, don't we? Yes. Right, so while we're waiting, we'll have a quick look at this Kasori dual blaze. You have got some presets on here for chicken, veggies, steak, fries, uh, seafood, and also frozen food as well. And the different uh, methods of doing that, you can use the air fry, you can use the reheat function, the roast function, also the keep warm function and the bake function there. The bake function is what we would normally use when we're doing baking, for example, yeah. cakes or whatever, or yeah. bread. And you've also got a thing called broil. Well, over in the UK, that's called a grill function. In other words, when you use the broil function, the top heating element will carry on working, but the bottom one is actually switched off. So you're basically using it as, as a grill. So we're just waiting now for these uh, veggies just to come. Let's have a little look just to show you. Now again, they're just starting to color up a little bit now. Now don't forget, you could have pre-cooked these, but um, because we're gonna be cooking other stuff in here as well, this is just like giving the veg a head start. So we'll let that go. And what Sharon's gonna do now is just put a little drop of olive oil into our containers, which we're gonna make our Yorkshire puddings in. And we're hopefully going to be doing two lots of cooking in one ear. By, yeah. by that we mean we're going to be cooking the Yorkshire pudding in with the actual roasted vegetables as well. So, 
although we're counting down, we might as well take this out at the moment, and we're going to put our two trays in here because we basically want to get these trays heated up and that oil heated up so we can pour our batter in. It's so got we'll, to be hot oil when you're Yeah, the oil's got to be hot for the batter to rise. So we've just left the vegetables in there and we're now going to put this in. With this Kasuri dual blaze, you can increase the time while it's on, yeah. which is a very good thing yeah. about it. So we're leaving it on 200 and our aim now is literally just to warm mm. that oil up so that we can pour that batter We'll get the in. sausages in in a minute and then we're going to get the um, batter mix in. Right. Okay, folks, we're back. So we've transferred our batter mix into a little jug there. We've got our three sausages and we're just going to open the drawer now. And we can see that that oil is actually bubbling away. Our vegetables are roasting nicely in there. So we're putting our sausages in and we're just going to pour our batter over and around. Now we can see that that's bubbling already, so just keep it in there. Get it in quickly. Yeah, get it in quick. You don't want to lose any heat and just whack that back in. And now we're going to put that on for 15 minutes on 200 degrees, folks. And hopefully it should all come together, Sharon. It should do. Okay, folks, we just finished, so let's take them out and have a look. Wow, there we go. Look at that, look. Both of them Yorkshire puddings have risen perfectly. So we've also done some extra... Uh, veg here. We just got some peas there folks in the colander. They're ready to go in and also some gravy So we're gonna plate up now And we'll come back to you when it's all on the plate Well, there we go. There's baby Frank's folks coming up with Charlotte's Oh, yeah, look at that look Them potatoes are well crispy folks and also that batter raised absolutely fantastically How about that? Let's have a closer look Well, there we go, folks. That is breakfast, lunch, and dinner all cooked in the uh, Kasuri Jewel Blaze there. And uh, that looks really, really tasty. As I say, we're not going to be tasting these ones because that is for Charlotte, our daughter-in-law, and uh, little grandson, our little grandson, yeah, little, little Frank. Frankie boy. They're going to thoroughly enjoy that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Just give you some ideas of what you can cook in the uh, Kasuri air fryers. This one is a 6.4 litre, and it is the Jewel Element version, as I said before, and we actually love it. I love it. I do love it. Anyway, thanks very much. Hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. And until then, bye. Bye for now. Let's get them their food, baby. Yeah.